Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over the concept of ions, ionic bonding and covalent bonding. Okay, so what is an ion? An ion is simply an atom that loses an electron or gains an electron. Okay, there's two types of ions. One of them is called a cation and the other type is called the anion. Okay, so these are the two types of ions. The cation loses electrons and the anion gains electrons. Okay, in ionic bonding, what's going to happen is that you're going to have a metal and a nonmetal and these two atoms are going to come together and become uh, a compound. Uh, and then in covalent bonding what you're going to have is you're going to have atoms that are sharing the electrons and this occurs between nonmetals. Okay, so this is very important that you notice covalent bonding is only between nonmetals whereas ionic bonding is between a metal and a nonmetal. Okay, so I'm going to uh, give you some examples so you can see what I mean. Okay, so you need to have a periodic table uh, for this lesson so you can go along with me. <clears throat> okay, sodium is an atom that's located on the left hand side of the periodic table on group 1. Uh, sodium has 11 protons. Okay, this is the atomic number. Um, it has an atomic mass of 22.99 and uh, if you look at the top of the periodic table you're gonna see that uh, sodium falls under a group called 1A <clears throat> okay take all of this in, into account okay now let's take a look at chlorine chlorine has an, an atomic number of 17 remember that this is the number of protons um, the, the symbol for chlorine is Cl and the atomic mass is 35.45 and chlorine falls under a group uh, called 7A this is the group of chlorine okay and I'm gonna explain to you what that all means in a second sodium is a metal okay this is very important it's a metal because it's on the left hand side of the periodic table and chlorine is a non-metal because it's on the right hand side of the periodic table. Now your periodic table is color coded so uh, you're gonna see that all the metals are gonna be a certain color and all the non-metals are gonna be another color so that's how you can tell it's color coded. Alright so let's see again when you have a metal and a non-metal you're gonna form ionic bonding. Okay in ionic bonding you're gonna have one atom giving up an electron and you're gonna have another atom gaining that electron okay so here uh, this weird picture that I drew is actually the representation of the sodium uh, atom uh, here at the center is the atomic nucleus here's where all the protons and neutrons are found you don't need to worry about protons and neutrons when it comes to bonding because the only thing that bonds are the electrons which are these little blue dots that I drew on the outside so only worry about the electrons when it comes to bonding now sodium has an atomic number of 11 11 is the number of protons but remember that uh, if you have 11 protons you also need to have 11 electrons so here I drew 11 electrons on sodium now these uh, these circular uh, things where I drew the electrons are called shells okay electrons fall under certain shells in an atom the first shell can only have two electrons so that's why I only drew two for the first shell and the second shell can only have a total of eight electrons okay so but remember sodium has a total of eleven electrons so I have to keep drawing another shell so on this last shell um, I only drew one electron because sodium has a total of eleven so if you count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven okay so this last shell I only drew one because it's a total of eleven electrons okay <clears throat> now over here this represents chlorine 
okay? Chlorine has a total of, let me see, let's go up here. Chlorine has a total of 17 protons, and if you have 17 protons, you need to also have 17 electrons. So I need to have 17 electrons here for chlorine. So let's see. The first shell can only have two, okay? The second shell can only have eight, and then I need to continue on the third shell until I have a total of 17. So eight plus two is 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we have the 17 electrons for chlorine. Now look what's gonna happen. <clears throat> In nature, every atom wants to have its shells completed, right? The first shell is completed because it has two electrons, and the second shell is completed because it has eight electrons. But the third shell is not completed. So the question is, is it easier for sodium to gain those uh, seven electrons that it's missing to have a total of eight, or is it easier for sodium to just get rid of this one electron? So it it takes less energy to get rid of this electron so that's what's gonna happen in nature in nature sodium is going to get rid of this electron up here okay so sodium loses its electron so sodium is called uh, a cat ion sodium is a cat ion because it loses electrons chlorine on the other hand is it easier to just get that remaining electron that it's missing because it needs to have a total of eight on its outer shell or is it easier to get rid of these uh, seven electrons well it's actually easier to just get one so sodium uh, I'm sorry so chlorine is called an anion because anions gain electrons okay anions are going to be for the nonmetals chlorine is a nonmetal and cations are going to be metals. So metals like to lose electrons and nonmetals like to gain electron. So look what's going to happen here. This electron of sodium is actually going to be lost and it's going to be given to chlorine. So chlorine is going to accept that electron. So look what's going to happen. This electron here is going to be lost Okay, so chlor uh, sodium is losing an electron. Sodium loses its electron. And chlorine gains that electron. So chlorine got the electron from sodium. Okay, now they're both happy because they both have their outer shells completed. Another name for an outer shell it's a valence shell so um, this the outer shell is the valence shell okay uh, sodium had one electron in its outer shell so you say that sodium has one valence electron okay so that's what let's go up here this number this 1a that you see on the periodic table this means that sodium had or, or has one electron in its outer shell or one valence electron and chlorine remember chlorine had seven electrons in its outer shell that's what this 7a means it means that there are seven electrons in the outer shell <clears throat> all right but now they're happy now they have their electron uh, all completed their outer shells completed okay and let me show you something okay if you want to find the charge because now uh, there's a charge what you do is you get the number of protons and you subtract it from the number of electrons and that's going to give you the charge so let's find out what is the charge of sodium sodium has 11 protons okay and how many electrons does sodium have now well it lost one so now it has 10 electrons and 11 minus 10 is 1 okay so sodium has a charge of 
one plus. Okay, so now sodium, when it when it gets the charge, is when you call it a cation. If it doesn't have the charge, you can't call it a an, an, uh, cation yet. Okay, so sodium has a one plus charge, and chlorine, remember it's the number of protons minus electrons. Chlorine has a total of uh, 17 protons, and now because it gained one electron, it has a total of 18 electrons, which would give it a charge of negative one. So chlorine now has a charge of negative one. Now that it has a charge, you can call it an anion. Okay, so okay, so sodium has a plus one charge. Chlorine has a uh, minus one charge. These two atoms are going to combine together to form a compound called sodium chloride. Okay, so this is the first video. Stay tuned to see the next one.